Right, a little bonus video here. If you haven't seen WTSF 10 yet, I'll link that in the description, but I promised that I would review a replay. It's partially to celebrate the fact that I've just got 10 episodes out. I only ever planned on doing one video like that. And I've had so much support and nice comments and all the rest of it that that's kept me going. So thank you uh, for, for 10 episodes of WTSF. But the other thing was that in episode 10, we said that we were going to look at how to get value and analysis out of watching a replay. Cal Gibran here has put a replay up on Reddit slash Street Fighter. For people that review and help him with what he's struggling with, which is online Ken players, sticking your own replays up on Reddit and on forums is a great way to get really good feedback because people can give you real examples of what you're doing right and wrong rather than just the abstract question of how do I beat Ken players. That said, Cal Gibran did upload a video without input display switched on, so please do switch that on if you can. What I've done is I've gone into CFN to find the replay myself so I can see what both players are doing. And you switch that on here by pressing start and then switching key display on. So around start they jump back, you air to air them and then you get a combo out of it. That is a good time to continue pressure. It's the start of the first round, they haven't built up any meter, they can't EXDP when you do that air reset on them. They could possibly do a heavy DP if you don't time things right. But that was a, a great opportunity to, to show that you can put pressure on them. Until they give you a reason not to do that, keep doing that. So your neutral jump did exactly what it's supposed to do there. They were mashing buttons and you got to punish them for that. But what's interesting here is that you then drop the combo and they punish you. Now in the input display we can see that there was no heavy kick. Maybe there's a little bit of familiarity with your own character that you need to pick up there as well. If you're going to start a combo, know what the rest of the combo is uh, and finish it. That's just practice. So that target combo that you've not been able to finish, because it's not ending in a knockdown or moving them away from you, there's no reason for them not to just mash DP and just wait for you to drop it and then the advantage is back on them. Basic combo there is medium punch, heavy punch, heavy kick. You can also confirm that with a second medium punch. Fully recommend doing that. Because if they do then block that combo, you can deliberately drop it and start blocking yourself for when they mash DP. And then there's another punish for you. Until you know more advanced combos and how to use your meter properly, that's a great combo that will actually get you quite far. And it fits a lot of different scenarios, which we'll show. So they do a tattoo that you block successfully. They get off with that really lightly. All you really do is about 100, 120 damage, somewhere around there. When you've blocked something that's punishable uh, and finishes very, very close to you like that, that is a time when you should be thinking about some of your higher damage uh, punish combos, possibly even a crush counter button. So I've set Kent to do a tornado kick and then immediately crouch block. I'm now going from your lightest buttons to your heaviest buttons, we can see what we can do to punish that. And one thing you'll see is that that target combo that you've just learned fits there. There are going to be some other things that you can do there as well. But in the interest of reducing your own character's complexity, stick to what you know. Instead, they get up and they get away for free. Bunch of air to airs. And what's interesting there is that A, you block the jump in and then press a button. But also that they go low, and we'll get onto that as well in a little bit. But these jump ins that they're doing here, some of them are badly timed and punishable. But if you're not anti airing them, and I saw in your comments you're aware that you're not anti airing enough, if you can't anti air and you have to block, it is still going to be their turn most likely. Which means that you should be thinking about do I block, do I back dash, do I tech a throw? You should not be thinking do I push a button? Because at that point, all you're doing is giving them the opportunity to finish a combo. So you're already aware that you need to anti air more. If you're not able to do that, what you do need to do is be able to block high and then block low. Because the most common thing they're going to do is then go in with a low attack, which is what they were doing. You're not going to push a button because they still are likely going to have the advantage then. You see, you immediately take damage if you try to push a button after blocking that kind of a jump in. Often they're deliberately timed in such a way that you are blocking when you're waking up. And that's what we would call a safe jump because that Ken has very little risk to take if they're going to do that because they know that you're going to have to block. So if you do push a button, you are going to take damage. If you don't block low, you are going to take damage. The only possible variation there is if they make you block high and then block high twice, which they're going to do by doing an overhead, which you can see there. If I block low straight after that, it's going to hit me. But how we deal with that scenario is we block high and then we block low, and then we look for the overhead, because the overhead's quite reactable. So if they do do it, we are going to see it happen. So we block high, block low block high and then we see the overhead so you see there on the input display we go down and then up again when we notice that they're doing the overhead practice that in training mode all you can that's a really important skill to have and the same again there another blocked jump in into a low then gives them a very easy tattoo and they're going to keep doing that 
You didn't get the whiff punish uh, the DP there, but then you did manage to get out an EX DP. Till you're confident with the whiff punishes, EX DP is a good panic move to do. Be aware that there's a very imbalanced risk reward there. If they block something like that, you will get punished for it, but it has paid off here. And they're clearly very aware that you're not protecting yourself from jump-ins. Also, know what range their jump-in is going to cross you up at. If you keep blocking in one direction and they go to the other side, you're going to take damage. So what you want to do is actually block in the opposite direction to what you're compelled to block in. That's going to be very common if you're at close range or if you're in the corner as well. Until you start responding to either the jump-in or the low that comes after it, they're going to just keep doing that. That's very, very free for them. Again, another unfinished combo. They're enjoying going low. There was an opportunity to punish a sweep there. If you are going to be defensive, and well done there for blocking that low, a blocked sweep is something that you should always have in your bank and ready to punish, because it happens quite a lot. Another jumping into low. Now jumping in after that EXDP did pay off there. Some characters will have answers for that, so watch out for that in future, uh, the EXDP in particular. If you are going to be aggressive after an EX Dragon Punch, just be wary. Your EX Dragon Punch has 13 knockdown frames and your dash has 16 dash frames. So you are minus three in their face then, and it's kind of their turn. And again, that's a really easy opportunity for a Kent to just notice after they've been knocked down, are they dashing at me? Because if they are, I can take the advantage back again straight away. It's important to be in their face when you can afford to be, but also be wary of when you need to back off. Ken players thrive on the opponent trying to play them at their own game and being aggressive. They really do benefit from the opponent tilting like that. And we can see that they're not afraid of mashing DP when you are putting on the pressure because you're not finishing the combos. And again, another jumping into low, jumping into low. And that finishes off the round. So aside from some of the examples there that I've ran, jumping a lot less, practicing your anti-airs, which you know that you need to do, knowing what your options are uh, in a safe jump scenario, just having some combos ready for opportunities when it is your turn to put pressure on. And much like I've shown in the other video, it is a matter of when they're doing things to you, you have to understand from your perspective what you're doing incorrectly or what you can do to avoid those scenarios entirely. So when you see the damage, press rewind for a couple of seconds, see what it was that got you into that position. It's very rare that you're going to have an answer of, oh well there's nothing I could have done there. Taking some of those scenarios and putting them into training mode, you can see very quickly that there are answers. And then in your next match against a Ken, you just try to apply those things that you've learned.